today I'm going to test the strength of these lightweight concrete garden box panels and it might get destructive. In this series I've made several lighter concrete mixes for these panels. With some of them I've tested the surface durability with a line trimmer, but today I want to test their tensile strength. Concrete is very strong under compression, but typically weak under tension. That's one of the main reasons to add wire reinforcement while you're pouring concrete. Now, like the line trimmer test, this is not scientific, but I wanted to see generally how the panels fared under a sideways load. These tests are designed to simulate the pressure the soil would exert against the garden box, or how the frozen soil and ice in the garden bed may expand in the winter and push against the inside face of the panels. I have a couple of ideas for testing their tensile strength. I designed a rig to suspend a panel on two steel rods. Then I can load the panel with more and more weight. The testing rig also has a ramp so I can drive my truck up on the panels and see how they take a much heavier weight. Here's how the rig works. It's made from framing lumber and has a wide base on one end and a narrow base on the other. There's a pair of wooden blocks on each end that hold a steel rod. The panel is placed in the testing rig with the inset facing down. The wider base end has a ramp for the truck. On the scales of my local gravel pit, my truck weighs about 6,900 pounds, with the front end being heavier than the back. With only the front two wheels on the scale, the weight is 4,350 pounds, so each front wheel exerts 2,175 pounds or slightly more than a ton, and each back wheel then exerts approximately 1,275 pounds. I have a hunch that the panels may not survive that much weight. It might be beyond the inherent tensile strength of a concrete beam of this dimension. And this might be way beyond the forces that any panel may be subject to in a garden box, but I thought I'd give it a try anyways. I think the weakest point is around the hole for the rebar that connects the panels to make up the garden box, so suspending the panel on the steel rods will put a lot of stress at that point. The plan is to slowly roll up in the panels and stop at the center of the span. If the panel breaks, then it will be interesting to see where that happens. And is that connection point the weak link? I have no idea what will happen here, so I think it could be interesting. I'll try the regular sand and gravel Portland-based panel first when I get to that test. I have more 36-inch panels than any other size, so that will be the length I'll do all the tests with. So, here's the panels I'll be testing. The first is made from regular portland base sand and gravel concrete and weighs 51 pounds. The second is the red lava rock mix. It's the third lava rock panel I made in part 3 of the series and it weighs 46 pounds. I don't think it's actually lava rock, but it's sold as that. Next will be the vermiculite blend. It weighs 35 pounds and was also made in part 3. Finally, I'll test two perlite blends that I made in part 3.5. The black tinted panel was made with CSA cement and weighs 29 pounds. The red tinted panel was made with Portland cement and weighs 35 pounds. Now to build the rig and test these panels. The rig went together pretty easily. I had some scrap 2x4s and 4x4s and some other framing lumber around from other builds. The blocks that hold the metal rods were made from some tight-grained fur for strength. After cutting everything to length on the miter saw, I lay out the hole locations on the blocks. A center punch is used to make a divot to help guide the bit when I get to the drill press. I start the holes from both ends of the block. Then back on the bench, I use a spade bit followed by a speed bit to smooth the connection of these so the steel rod doesn't bind or get hung up. Two blocks are set in place and clamped. I used a tire iron to align the holes. This is all pretty rough, no precision woodworking here. Then screws run in from the underside. Then I'll make the platform for the other end of the rig and attach the blocks to it as well.
Then finally, I can attach the ramp to the platform. I added a few small supporting blocks here. All right, jig's ready to go. All right, let's see how a panel fits in the rig. regular concrete. Before I test the panels in the rig, I decided to simply lay them over some 2x4s and step up on them. Lavacrete! Vermiculite? Perlite. I was getting a pretty good workout huffing and puffing while slugging those panels around all day. And another perlite. All right, on with the next test. Okay, this is uh, regular concrete on the pins. Okay, all right, that worked okay. Okay, this is lava crete. Vermiculite. Okay. Okay, that's perlite. Okay, second perlite. Okay. So I'm not surprised all the panels passed these first two tests, but we'll get the truck ready and we'll see how it does on the next one. Okay, for this uh, first test with the truck, we're gonna back the truck up onto the panel. This is the regular concrete. Well, that's a fail. Man. Well, I broke the first panel. Must be uh, way too much weight for it. So I'll see if I can get uh, the rig apart here and see if I can salvage it for something else. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if I can get this out or not. Rebuild this. All right, let's pull the truck ahead. Have a better look at that. See what it looks like. I'm surprised a bit. I think uh, I was expecting it to fail right here at this point, but it didn't. That stayed together and it failed about mid span here and about a third of the way in over here. The testing rig was designed and assembled so if the panel failed, the middle could pivot down. The one end is narrow, so it pivots about the bottom, and the end with the ramp has clearance below the panel and only has screws on one end of the blocks, so it can freely rotate down as well. So basically the testing rig would not add any support to the panels other than where the steel rods run through the holes. 
I had a feeling that the truck might just be too heavy and it broke the panel right away. What was interesting is that the panel did not break where the rods were supporting it. If my estimation is correct, then all the other lighter panels would fail as well under the weight of the truck's rear wheel. I know that all the panels supported my weight, but I don't think I should have jumped right from my weight to the weight of the truck. So I repaired my rig, removed the ramp from one end, and slowly this time we'll add more weight. This is the lava crete. We're going to add more weight to it. I've got some bags of concrete mix. So this is uh, an additional that's 55 pounds. And I'll stand on that. We'll make it 250 pounds. All right, no problem with that. We'll add another 55 pounds. 110 plus 200. 310 pounds. All right, no problem with that. We'll add another 55 pounds on that one. And my full weight. Nothing. One more bag on here. Plus my weight. Nothing. Okay, this is the vermiculite blend with additional weight. 55 pounds. 255. Add another 55 pounds. Three hundred and ten pounds. There's another fifty five. Three hundred and sixty five pounds. There's another fifty five. This will be a total of four hundred and twenty pounds. Nothing. All right. Okay, this is the perlite with additional weight. Two hundred fifty five pounds. I heard a little crack. This will be three hundred and ten pounds. Oh, it's okay. This will be three hundred and sixty five pounds. This will be four hundred and twenty pounds. Hmm. It's okay. Maybe that cracking was it was just settling. This is a second perlite sample. 55 plus me. 255 pounds. Another 55. So now a total of 310 pounds. Another 55, so 365 pounds. Total of 420 pounds. survived. So all the lightweight panels could handle 420 pounds mid-span without a problem. And maybe that's strong enough. For a garden box, I think that would do, but I think I'd like to push them a bit more. Also, the concrete panel that broke under the truck wheel was from part two of the series, and the wire mesh was a lighter gauge or thickness than the hog panel sections I used in the rest of these panels. So for the next test, I built a new rig. I modified my shop press to hold a panel on the steel rods in a similar fashion as the first rig. With the shop press, I can measure the weight applied by the ram. There's a gauge connected to the hydraulics that measures the force applied in one ton increments. Those are large jumps in force, so hopefully I can still estimate the weight applied somewhat accurately. The blocks that hold the steel rods sit on two lengths of heavy steel channel. I would expect these channels to flex a bit, but I hope they don't bend under the load. And I hope the rods don't bend either. I think the panel would fail before that, but I don't know. I haven't tried this before. If the stress becomes too great for the press or my rig modifications, I'll stop. Either way, if the panel breaks or it doesn't, we'll have some numbers to look at. Okay, here we go. Once I set the blocks on the channels, I then set a panel in place to test the fit and make adjustments.
To distribute the load from the ram, I set a block of wood on the panel with a strip of steel on top of it. Okay, this first test is with uh, Labracrete. Looks like everything's rolling. Shield's in place. And we'll apply some pressure and see what happens. see what's going on here no pressure regulated at all here but we've already cracked the panel cracked right in the center no cracks on the outside edges and I don't think it registered anything on the gauge well we'll have a look in a second So I just finished my first test with the shop press uh, modified to hold one of these panels. This is the Lavacrete panel. Um, it broke right here in the center after taking quite a bit of flex. A couple good things is that it didn't break around the pins, but I reviewed the footage from my iPhone that was focused on the gauge, and the gauge didn't move at all, so I can't tell how many pounds of force it took to break the panel. So I'm going to go back to my previous rig and just load these with more weight. Okay, this is the vermiculite blend. And I've got some bricks. And we're going to load this. And we're going to see if we can get to 600 pounds. I've already started a, a few rows of the uh, uh, bricks already. And we'll just kind of go slow here and see how it goes. I'm going to keep my stack going fairly level here and try to keep my toes out of the way too. Let's have a quick peek here. See if it's flexing at all. Oh yeah, it's got a bit of a flex to it. Oh. That was a, heard something. Nope, no crack yet. 40. If I get all the bricks on, that will be 540 pounds. Let's see how we're doing. Don't see any cracks. Might be one starting right there. Let's see if we can get to uh, 540. Okay, 540 pounds. We got a little crack opening up right there. Let's add one bag of concrete. Okay, this will be 600 pounds. I see another crack starting to open up right there. Okay, I'm gonna stop at 600. We'll pull all the weight off and uh, have a look at that crack. Okay, so that was, that was vermiculite. Let's have a look at the panel. Little fine crack right here. It's still together though, but that would probably be where if I added more weight it would fail. Everything else looks okay. All right, that was a vermiculite.
600 pounds. This is the first perlite. And we'll do the same. All right, how close are we here? We're coming up on, we'll stop at 540 pounds and have a look at it. My workout today. Okay, that's 540 pounds. I don't see any cracking. Okay, this will be 600 pounds. See any cracks? <sighs> Looks fine. Okay, so uh, CSA uh, based perlite. And I think this is actually the lightest of the panels. All right. Whoa. 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 All right. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, sixteen rows. 480 pounds this one took. No problems with the edges. All right. So I got another uh, sample of uh, regular Portland based sand and gravel concrete. And this one was made in, uh, made in part one of the series. So it's a couple of years old. That is 540 pounds. And let's go to 600. Six hundred pounds on regular concrete. Not a crack. So this has been an interesting exercise. Not everything worked as expected during these tests. I had to make some concrete strength assumptions in the beginning and go with that and then adjust as I went along. And I had to abandon some testing plans when I found them not helpful or accurate enough for meaningful comparisons. And that's just how it goes while experimenting. I learned a lot and it's worth giving some things a try. And the mistakes I made have sparked new ideas for other tests. And if you watch this video to this point, I thank you for indulging me. I thought it important to show as much of this exercise as I could. So what can I say about these tests and what does this all mean? My takeaway is that I believe the panels I tested would withstand a substantial sideways load and that I would not expect them to fail at what I thought was the weakest point around the end where the panels interlock and are connected with a bar. Even with the truck and shop press issues, I was happy with how much weight they could withstand and by how much the panels flex before they broke. And even though these tests are by no means scientific, I could see a correlation between strength and lightness. The lightest panel in the test failed under the lightest load.
I still like the idea of using a rig like my modified shot press. It would be the fastest and easiest way to strength test these panels if I could find a smaller ram that applies less force and with a gauge that reads in pounds instead of tons. I'll have to look into that a little bit further. I also like the idea of using steel reinforcement grid and I've decided to keep using this heavy gauge uh, galvanized hog fencing in my panels. I have a feeling that's what allows the panels to flex so much before breaking. I would be very interested in your thoughts and suggestions here. Please leave me a comment below if you have any other ideas. In my next video I'll look at testing the strength of air creep panels so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified when that's uploaded. Thanks for hanging in there. Man, I appreciate it. I so appreciate it. We'll see you next time.